scripture from Song of Songs 8 and 6 and 7 and it says, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Its, its jealousy is as fierce as the grave. It is the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. push love, you cannot rush love, you cannot force anything. Love needs to develop by itself. And when you allow one another to develop that love for one another, We met on Instagram. Yeah, she kind of stalking me on Instagram, and I followed her, but then she followed me back and liked all my posts. And she keeps sort of like commenting, "Oh, great word! You're so, you're amazing! You're so handsome!" Like, just just keep going and going and going. I'm like, "Oh, this girl's coming on a bit, a bit strong." He actually saw me on the Elementary National website. I was back then a kids pastor, so uh, my photo was on the website, and then he saw me. And then he started stalking me, he started messaging me. I thought I'd, I thought I'd DM her and say, hey, look, 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 I really appreciate your devotionals. They're fantastic. I, I find them really encouraging. Maybe we should collaborate, you know, connect. And what was your first impressions of them? Should I be honest or? Yeah, be I... honest, be honest. The first time we met face to face, before that it was just phone and messages, he rocked up at Illumination National Church on Sunday. And then he was standing at the door, he got his um, jack shirt, unbuttoned, no sorry, jack shirt and then his um, denim jacket and he had his black jeans, <laughs> tight jeans on. The skinny jeans. The skinny <laughs> jeans. And then the first thing I noticed was like, oh my gosh, I feel like he's gay. Because of his tight jeans, okay? I thought she was gorgeous, yeah, I thought she was beautiful, yeah. And he's very handsome as well. It's easy to like him, oh. like his face, but... More like the most importantly is his kindness and his love for Jesus. I know that's what like made me fall in love with him. Oh my gosh, girl! Oh, and his sense of humor. He's very funny. <laughs> Can you tell me a little about your guys' first date? First date wasn't the best first date. I'm gonna be honest. It was the most awkward day of our lives. I was very like walls up. I'm like I'm gonna suss you out first. Like who are you? You know, never seen him on top of their tight pants. <laughs> like. <laughs> And she said she thought I was gay as well. <laughs> so, it wasn't the best first day, it was very awkward. So, we, we, we found it hard to transfer the chemistry from the phone to the in person. But the, but the second and third day, she didn't want me to go home. Yeah. Can I just say something as well? Yes. I just want to share a story. So, the second date that me and Tumby had, it was going really well. So, we were in the lounge and I had to, we, I had to go. And we, we were like sort of just hugging, and she said to me, she said to me, looked at me, she said, are you going to kiss me? And I said, no, you can. Just hold your horses. <laughs> so we're saving it for today, is it? Yeah, it's absolutely not, not quite for always. <laughs> <laughs> what do you love most about Jake? Oh, there's so many things. Um, I think the first is his, like, he's got like a baby heart. He's really soft, he's got a soft heart and he, he forgives and he moves on and he doesn't hold on to grudges. Not just with me but any people. Like he's he's quick to move on, he's quick to like forget grudges and he's quick to love people. That's his top quality that I like. There's a lot of things I love about her. I think like she's an incredibly like she's a very virtuous woman. She's she see like she's compassionate, she's kind, she's creative, um, she's way more intelligent than she realizes also and she always like she, she I think she sees the best in people as well yeah. I want him to be Shrek and I want to be Fiona it's not it's not because of the way it looks it's just like the character 
he looks he looks like rough and tough, but mm. he's quite soft on the inside. Yeah. And there was a part where he becomes a human as well, Shrek. Have That's you seen right, that part? Yes. It's pretty cute. <laughs> She'd make a good Mulan, but she thinks she's Pocahontas, but I said, no, love your Mulan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're not Pocahontas. If you could describe your relationship in a song, uh -huh. what song would, you, would it be? Um, goodness of God. Yeah, goodness of God. Yeah, it's only through God we came thus far. Yeah, actually, Tim and Campbell, can we talk? Yeah, because I'm always talking and she's always like <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little introduction, who you are. Shafuya, sha, sha, hey. Shafuya, roll, call my name is Mela, yeah. Is how do you know the bride Tumbi and what were your first impressions of her? I met Tumbi, okay, this story is funny. So the first time I met her, I saw her when she came to our Christmas production. I think she came out for ELC graduation or something. I can't remember. But when I came off the stage after practice, um, Jake said hi and then I said hi. I was like, hello, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, Tumbi Bimba. And as I was talking, there was a song on about our production. So I just turned around and started twerking in front of Tumbi. <laughs> And you know what? Tumbi's like, oh my god, I like you! I was like, I like you too, let's be friends! Here we are! I met Tumbi first, well I really connected with her first when we went to a lunch at our pastor's house, Don and Hailey and we just started talking about just anything and everything and we just really connected and that's when we just started to become best friends I thought she was really cute and very sweet I know Tambi from Elam in Wellington, so we met there while she was kids pastor and uh, we first pretty much interacted when she tried to get me on kids team so she had ulterior motives and she was like, I want to be besties with you but I want you on kids team um, but first impression, she was honestly, Tambi's the loveliest person ever I know Tambi through Jake, who is a really good friend of mine uh, I met Tambi online like Jake did. No. Um, I think I actually met her at like a Momo tea. I think Jake introduced us. We went out for dinner uh, with a, a few of our friends and Jake brought her along to introduce us. Um, and yeah, first impressions, just very beautiful. And probably first impressions and lasting impression is that she's just really deep, um, really beautiful, really generous and a really good listener. So every time I'm with Tumbi, she's just like, and I'm like, how do you know Jake the groom? And what was your first impression of him? Um, I've known Jake for the last few years, like I think six or seven years um, through church. But honestly, my first impression of Jake, I, I thought this guy was like, I thought that he thought a lot of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Good to be more honest yeah, here. Yeah, we real. Jake's my, sorry, I'm Jake's best friend. Well, not necessarily he's mine, but I'm his best friend. So we go way back, what, four years ago? Oh, when Jake first came to church the Sunday in the evening service, I saw a guy chopping by himself in a pew. So I went and I stood next to him. And then we became friends after that. <laughs> what is one of the uh, funny stories or memories that you've had together? I've got a lot of funny moments and memories with you because you lived with me. But, um... Honestly, I think the one thing that I always remember is when you were um, preparing for Replenish and this is when uh, Replenish was online so you had to like practice the song you were singing and you were living with me and your vocal exercises Tumbi, they were out the gate. I've never heard those sounds before. <laughs> I remember um, there was this one day I was getting ready for bed and then I heard something and I literally thought it was a police siren. I was like, oh my gosh, and then I walked out my room and I'm like, this is Tumbi in the bathroom. <laughs> And so a couple months ago, we started waking up at 5.30 every morning to work out, to get ready for the wedding. And at first it was fine, but then it started to get really hard because it was really early. <laughs> so both of us admitted waking up early in the morning and then looking on our phone and hoping and praying the other one texted saying, Ah, uh, I'm feeling sick or uh, I'm too tired, I can't do this. <laughs> so yeah, that's, and then we quit like... <laughs> Do you have any funny memories or stories with Jake in the office or it's just like hanging out together? I mean a specific story, but all through lockdown, me and Jake, we'd go have coffee probably five times a week at Mountford Park. We'd sit at the front step, we take turns who shouts the coffee or hot chocolate, it was too late. 
and we just sit there and laugh, yeah, all through lockdown. You know, like for the longest time, like, because I know Jake's Simon, one, but for the longest time, Jake went around going, Muay Muay Lover to everybody. And I was like, what, what on earth is Muay Muay Lover? And he goes, it's Samoan. And I was like, for? Because Muay Muay Lover means sleep, sleep abundantly. <laughs> but he walked around the office greeting everybody, Muay Muay Lover, Muay Muay Lover. I think he's trying to say, Tano for Lama. <laughs> what is some advice or encouraging words that you want to give to bride and groom for their marriage? Um, I think for me, is the most important thing is giving God in the center of your marriage. Because whatever happens, I think, I, I don't know because I've never been married before and I know it's not going to be easy, there's going to be ups and downs, but I think keeping God in the center of your relationship, it'll be fine. I would say ask for help. When you need help, ask for help. Ask each other for help and ask your village for help. And also as a collective, I think it's important to ask God for help. Um, more than anything, I think it's really important um, that you don't carry things in your own strength or in your own wisdom or in your own knowledge. Um, you are both very strong uh, and I think when you yield and when you submit to God and submit to one another, um, it will make it easier for you to help uh, others and to also ask for help when you need it. I can see God as the center of your relationship and that's how I know that's why you're obviously navigating through this so well because you guys keep your you both keep your eyes so fixed on God and if I have any encouragement and advice it's do that in your marriage as well let it be a God fearing marriage like seek him first because he will be the one that journeys and takes you from stream to stream but honestly keep each other priority keep loving on each other the way you do and you're both meant to be like I fully believe it's a God ordained marriage and I'm just so excited for you guys I told Tommy in the car yesterday, always communicate, that's the best thing. And if you just are having difficulties, like having a fight or something, just take a breather and then get back together and just talk, just talk it out. And remember, they're your best friend, so. Jake and Tommy were praying for you guys and I pray that, this, that you're coming together and um, your marriage will be founded on God, um, who is the source of love the source of forgiveness, the source of all good things. And so we're wishing you guys all the best. We love you guys. I'm proud of you. God says to Job, he says it a couple times. He says, gird up your loins. It means grow a pair. I would encourage Jake to still take charge, to lead well. Come on. To, to don't lose his pair. Don't let them go in the purse, but just, 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 just. <laughs> gird up your loins, Jake. Be a man, in the words of God. But no, if I could be, I'd say I have long-term vision. You know, it's not about how many kids you want, how many great-grandchildren do you want. You know, when you're looking for a, a house or financial decisions, what inheritance do you want to leave your grandkids? And then obviously as Christians, further than that, an eternal perspective. So it's not even just about your, your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids, but how you're going to impact this world for eternity and see uh, your the presence you'll make in heaven, just you guys as an awesome couple going forward. Yeah. Tumby's favorite color? Purple. My girl's favorite color is pink. Oh. It's purple. Purple. It could be purple. It could be purple, yeah. Blue? Nah, like blue. It's, nah, like it's, blue. Like, it's like this kind of like aqua ish. Oh. Uh, what was the sport that Jake played in high school? Oh. Um, table tennis? <laughs> nah, cricket. <laughs> Jake plays sport? Uh, he played first 15. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's badminton. <laughs> cricket. Is it cricket? Cricket. Is being cheeky a sport? and being cheeky, yeah. Where was Tambi born? An India girl, in um, the Taj Mahal. I mean, oh, wait. In Naga land. In Naga. Uh, India. Well, what school did Jake go to? I don't know. It starts with a J, JC, is it? Tangaroa College. De La Salle for girls? <laughs> <laughs> That's how people. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would have grown up by now. But you're still the same, man. De La Salle. Lasalle. <laughs> That's why he's like that. <laughs> I think it's either a James Scoop or Dee Lasalle. What is Tambi's favorite worship song to lead? Uh, to lead, I'm gonna take a kiss and say, I speak Jesus. Waymaker. How great is that God? I speak Jesus. Awake my soul. No longer slaves. Yeah.
I, I believe there's a, there's a lot in store, and it's going to be a wonderful journey in a way you see a lot of God's plans unfold, as you have seen already individually, but now together, it's going to be really awesome. My name is Ajano. I'm Tambi's mom. Hi, I'm Tirza. I'm uh, Tambi's sister. Hi, my name is Sharon, and I'm the second youngest in the family. My name is Tabitha, and I'm the youngest one. So what was Tambi like growing up when she was a little girl? Um, Tambi was a very happy girl actually and she wants to explore and she always wants to go forward and she is like never giving up type, you know. <laughs> she was always responsible of us, like she was our older sister yeah. and she always took on that role of taking care of us. She was she still is like stubborn and yeah. like sensitive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was quite loud. Yeah. <laughs> very fun. Still yeah, very fun, yeah. She loved practicing her vocals. <laughs> and like, I remember she used to fight with like mostly our brothers a lot. <laughs> She was pretty rough. Uh, we used to fight a lot and quarrel. I mean, I, I was the one who started, but she would always retaliate back. So. I'm Jake's mom. La wule fali le malu mia, but you can call me Lo. Uh, what was Jake like growing up? That's Jake was a a very, very happy young boy. He was a beautiful looking. Beautiful looking child, Aww. really beautiful looking child. I don't know what happened, but he was a beautiful looking child. <laughs> some some of the ladies used to stop me in the street when he was in his pram and say, oh my gosh, what a lovely little girl. So he's not a girl, he's a boy. And, uh, and they said, oh, well, you're gonna have problems with him when he grows up, he's so beautiful. But Jake thought he was a jokester. And he used to, um, he used to, make up jokes and this was about when he was like three years old and he'd say things like he'd say things to me like when I was getting dressed or something and I'd say oh son how do I look and he'd say oh mum you look like a model I said oh thanks son Aww. and he goes like a model airplane so mum why did the chicken cross the road this is when he was three years old and I said why why did the chicken cross the road to get to KFC of course <laughs> That was three-year-old. So Jake's uh, always been funny since he was a... Well, yeah, he thinks he's, <laughs> he's uh, uh, funny. Love one another. And, yeah, because... Even though you say, I love you, but, you know, to show the real love, sometimes it's not easy. So That's you true. really have to have the love of God. And mm -hmm. I love you, Tambi. And, yeah, it's... Great to see you getting married yeah. and finally the day has come and yeah, it's beautiful. It's because of the walk with the Lord, they made each other and I want them to keep walking with the Lord and I, I believe they yeah, are the part of a successful, mar successful marriage, I guess. Yeah. Well, probably what I've always encouraged them to do and it's just to be kind to each other. You know, even there doesn't have to be somebody who's right and doesn't have to be somebody's wrong even if you think you're right and the other person's wrong just be kind to each other and if you can remember that then you know you're gonna do you're gonna do well i hope them all the best for their marriage married life um they both love the lord so much so like you know i i know that they'll be fine yeah. he'll always watch over them I hope that they go through it together and, you know, they'll always love each other the same as they love each other now. Yeah. Even more. Even more. Yeah.